it was my dream is to be a professional baseball player. So that was my goal going into college. So I actually only went for three years and uh, elected to get drafted um, my junior oh, year. Oh, that is yeah. exciting. Mm-hmm. That's exciting because I played baseball when I was uh, growing up too. You know, got scholarship, went to play baseball in college as well. Didn't get the opportunity to go sit in the draft. So that's <laughs> super exciting. I'm excited for you. So how was that experience? Um, was it where you were just sitting at the – at home on the call, or you just got the call? Tell us about that. So that day was the most stressful day like of my life. That was like because that however many years of work and sacrifice to me went into that one day. Hey, Keith, how you doing today? I'm doing good. Good to be here. Yeah, awesome, awesome. We definitely appreciate you coming by today. And to those that are listening to Burn the Ship today, we have Mr. Keith Butler with the Brothers That Just Do Gutters. That's right. That's it. Awesome, man. I'm glad I was able to get that correct. Um, Again, we definitely appreciate you coming on today. Uh, When we started these podcasts, we tried to make it where the people that came on to do the interview and we figured out why you're doing what you do. Mm-hmm. So today we're just going to ask a bunch of questions to try to figure out who is Keith and um, what makes him do what he does and why they should choose you over someone else with that business solution. So tell us a little bit. Are you you from the Atlanta area? Where are you from? Yeah, so uh, I actually grew up here in East Cobb, mm-hmm. um, went to Lasseter High School. Nice. Uh, Trojans. Trojans, yep. Um, so I actually went back this past week uh, with my son, uh, who got to throw out the first pitch at the baseball game. Nice. So it was fun. Nice. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So over there in Laster and East Cobb, um, while you were there, were you part of any clubs or sports? Uh, what did you do? Yeah, so I had a great time at Laster. So um, my freshman year, I actually played all three sports. So I played football, baseball, and basketball. Athlete. Um, and then I, play, I had been playing basketball at the same amount of time as baseball since like five or six. Okay. Um, but that was a that was a long year, you know, not going home, a lot of practicing. So going into my sophomore year, I dropped football, uh, played basketball and baseball. Uh, my junior year did play basketball and baseball again, and then I started getting really serious about baseball. Okay, um, okay. At the time, I hadn't had any a scholarship yet going into my senior year, so I wanted to focus on doing some showcases in the fall. All right. So I dropped basketball and then did that and actually got seen by my uh, college coach, uh, recruiter, um, and then just did baseball, and yeah. Okay, so mm-hmm. tell us what position in basketball did you play, and then what position did you play in football? Yeah, so in football, I played defensive back, and I played receiver, and then you know I would return punts and kicks. Okay. Um, basketball was a point guard. You know, I was okay. uh, on the shorter side, um, but I was quick. And then baseball outfield. Okay. So I could pretty much play any outfield position. Yeah, the reason why I ask that is because the reason why we do that is to try to figure out that why. You know, mm-hmm. why should someone choose Keith uh, for their gutter issues? And those small things are important because if you were play basketball and you were – um, that point guard position, that means you were able to control the ball and help to get the team into their proper positions and things like that. Those skills that you had from there move over to what you're doing now. So that's why I asked, you know, what position you were playing, because we want the audience to know why they should choose you. So as you finish up high school, you're getting ready to make those decisions. Sounds like you went the baseball route. Uh, where, where did you end up going to college? So, yeah, so uh, going into my senior year, I actually accepted uh, a scholarship to play at Liberty University, which was great because then it took a lot of pressure off going into senior season. Absolutely. Uh, we ended up having a great season, actually be- becoming the number one team in the country oh, wow. uh, that year, which was nice. So- and then, um, so yeah, after senior year in, in high school, I went on to Liberty University uh, on a baseball scholarship. Okay. And there um, you stayed for all four years, or how did that work out for you? No, so I went, uh, um, my lo- lifelong dream was to be a professional baseball player. Okay. So it was funny. I even have a, I used to draw to when I was younger. Right. So I had a picture that I drew of a glove and a ball, and it was reflections at the time. It was, my dream is to be a professional baseball player. So that was my goal going into college. So I actually only went for three years and uh, elected to get drafted 
um, my junior oh, year. Oh, that is yeah. exciting. Mm-hmm. That's exciting because I played baseball when I was uh, growing up too. You know, got a scholarship, went to play baseball in college as well. Didn't get the opportunity to go sit in the draft. So that's <laughs> super exciting. I'm excited for you. So how was that experience? Um, was it where you were just sitting at the at home on the call or you just got the call? Tell us about that. So that day was the most stressful day like of my life that was like because that however many years of work and sacrifice to me went into that one day so how i spent that day was i started dating my girlfriend after high school who is now my wife also we both went to lassiter and um we were dating out throughout college so we were actually at my parents house just trying to stay busy waiting for the phone to ring Mm -hmm. you know as you you get the ticker at that time it was just on tv um, and you would see the ticker, and they would see the round, and the, per- the player drafted. And, yeah, we just try to stay busy. Okay, okay. <laughs> so you are there watching television, and um, which fortunate club called you? Who called you? So, yeah, so I, uh, the phone rings. I pick it up, and it's uh, Bill Swoops, who's the uh, – it was the Chicago Cubs. Awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. Wrigley, <laughs> Wrigley Field action. That's awesome. That's a good deal. So tell us a little bit about that experience. So you got the call. You mm-hmm. got drafted. Mm-hmm. And where did you go? Did you go to minor leagues first? Or tell us how that worked for yeah, you. Yeah, so uh, I got the call, and then it was immediate. Once I accepted, uh, negotiations were done with the signing bonus. Um, they flew me out to Arizona. Uh, for what they call a short season with all the college players. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you complete, and then we went from Arizona to Boise, Idaho to complete a shorter season. Okay. At Boise, Idaho, <laughs> it was uh, during the summer, I hope, right? It was, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. I, was about to say, I don't know if you're going to get much ball out uh, there know, in the tundra yeah. up there. Nope, not at okay, all. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, with that particular experience, you were in the minor leagues. Tell me, who was the most famous baseball player you were able to come across during your baseball journey? Who would you say was the most famous person outside of yourself, obviously? <laughs> Without a doubt, Sammy Sosa. Okay. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you were so you were around during that time when him and Mark were having those home run battles? Yeah, it was. I think it was a little bit right after that. Okay. So um, I was able to go up to some big league games in spring training and uh, was able to to play alongside Sammy Sosa, which was that it was pretty cool. Amazing. That's an amazing <laughs> story to be able to tell your children. And you're like, hey, you know, I did play with Sammy Sosa. Mm-hmm. Like, he did um, assist me in making a couple outs. Mm-hmm. At least that's the way I would say it. <laughs> yeah. So that journey during baseball, that had to be awesome. Um, so what happened after you decided to move on from there? Yeah, so um, I played three years, uh, got released that after that third year in spring training. And I hadn't finished my degree yet, so I came back and finished up online at Liberty University Mm -hmm. and got my bachelor's degree. What did you study? Uh, Business finance. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So you had an idea uh, that you wanted to go into business, or is that just something that the... um what is it? The uh, adv- yeah, this the aptitude test told you it was business, or your advisor told you it was business. What was it? You know what? So my dad was in business. Uh, he worked for IBM and retired with them after thirty seven years. Okay. And then my mom also worked too. So she worked at a, a a public company as well as an HR manager. So I was just kind of accustomed to them going to the business office. So I just kind of felt that was just a natural. Okay. path for me. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you finished up your degree and what was the first career after you finished up that degree? So it was actually even before that. So as I was finishing up my degree, I was working full time at Sports Authority as a receiving manager okay. in the warehouse. Opening up, I had a little team that we'd get the freight onto the floor. Mm-hmm. Once I did complete my degree, I applied for a position at IBM. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So IBM, um, what were you helping them with? Because I know IBM is just does so much stuff. What were what were some of your responsibilities there at IBM? Absolutely. So I was a part of a team that uh, sold our all our products and services to small what they could small and medium businesses. So um, businesses from a million to say five hundred million. Okay. Um, That's and huge. these are and these are a specific industry. So manufacturing, distribution, and I actually was over the phone. So in my territory was actually New York and New Jersey. Okay. So you were servicing the business that you had, or were you creating new business? Creating new business. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you were just getting on the phone, starting to get sales and get your process down, and just help them with your business solutions at IBM. For sure. How long did you stay there? 
Uh, I was a little over three years. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it seems like three years is the number for you. <laughs> I, I read three you. years in college, three years in baseball, and then we got three years in IBM. Uh, what was the next part of your journey from IBM? Yeah, absolutely. So with when I was at IBM, it was I just you know it was over the phone. So I was wanted to start to look for something more local and then to get into the field sales wise. Okay. So I had a friend that worked at a company called Cintas. Um, they sell uniforms and an array of different Cintas. products. Yeah, I remember seeing that truck. Mm-hmm. Those blue letters. Exactly, all okay. over the place. Right. So uh, the division I was in was uh, they would shred confidential material. So I just uh, I applied there and got the position. And then so that's what led me there was a, a friend that said, hey, Keith, we're hiring. Uh, would you be interested? And I said, yeah, absolutely. So that's what okay. got me there. All mm-hmm. right. So I'm assuming you were there for three years as well? Well, so... Uh, um, no, actually longer. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but oh, I, I was at that I was at that position for about three years. Okay, so yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> so it seems as if you know you have had positions where you know you had to lead the team mm-hmm. when it comes to baseball and basketball. Um, you had the experience of being in the show. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, you were in the show, man. So I, <laughs> that's that's an awesome experience. So you're not it, what the reason why I share that is because pressure. Mm-hmm. You know. You're up there set, playing beside Sammy Sosa. There has to be pressure, but you were able to survive and thrive in there because it wasn't like you were there for a couple months. You were there for years, and then you moved on to start get your sales experience uh, with IBM, and then you're into managing teams when it came to um, CentOS. Mm-hmm. So after CentOS is when we started with the gutters, or was there another start stop after that? No, it was uh, after CentOS. So CentOS. 10 plus years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And was it where you were ready to try something different or was it where CentOS just wasn't mixing well with what you wanted to do? What sparked that interest in going out on your own? No, that's a great question. So when the pandemic hit last year, um, we went full um, out of the office. So Mm -hmm. there was, I had a lot of reflection time about, you know, what I wanted to do or where I wanted to be within the next 10, 15 years. And, you know, I really started wanting to own something and to be able to create an environment that I wanted. Um, because oftentimes it can, I felt like it can be very difficult, uh, within a space. Okay. So that's what prompted me to do that. And the brothers that just do gutters, there's a connection there with the owners of the company. Um, their sister was my wife's college roommate. Okay. Okay. And her husband, when I got drafted by the Cubs, actually transferred to Liberty and was a baseball player. Okay. Okay. So we were actually visiting with them, taking the kids up to their house um, during the fall. And when I was started thinking, you know, what's something I could, you know, own? Or what kind of business could I create? You know, I pondered the current thing I was doing at CentOS. Is there something that I could do on my own? Um, and then it, that popped in my head. The brothers had just do gutters and it is a franchise. So you have to have rights to the certain zip codes. So when I went on the website to do some research, there's a location in Columbus. Okay. Um, there's a couple of locations and the area that I service, there was a, um, there was a, a link, but it well, you couldn't click on it, but you could click on the other ones. Mm-hmm. So I was like, wow, I wonder, which was Cobb County area. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Listen so I was like, man, I wonder if this is available. Right. And so my wife, Liz, you know, she immediately uh, gets on the phone with Rebecca, who is, was her college roommate and says, Hey, we're looking into this. Let's talk more. And then that's where the conversation started. Okay. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, listen, like I said, that's super exciting. I'm always excited to hear what, prompted a business owner to start it Mm -hmm. because we all have tons of ideas in our minds. Oh, we can do this. We can do that. And a third, but do we have that gumption to step off of the curb and actually go and do it now with this particular venture? Is it just you and your wife or did you have a partner or how did that part come together? Yes. It was just my wife and I. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So that's good. Now, What I want to dive into is about the business in itself. You know, for the people that are listening and watching today, we want you to share with them exactly what it is that you do so we can know what that business service is. So if you had to explain to everyone, what is it that you guys do? Absolutely. So our business is we focus strictly on gutter solutions. So um, whether it's residential or commercial, um, if there's a damaged gutter, we can repair it. 
if your system's old and you need a new system, we can install a new one. Mm -hmm. uh, we can clean the gutters, and then we can also offer the guards to go on the gutters to keep debris out of them, to keep them from getting clogged. Okay, okay. Now, geographically, mm -hmm. I know there were all these slots that were there in your East Cobb or your Cobb County slot was available. What is your geographical reach? How far are you going out to help businesses and residents with these gutters? So it's an interesting question, right? So um, these franchisees, they purchase rights to certain zip codes. However, the coverage isn't complete within the state. So the the, the, the zip codes I purchased were Cobb County, Paulding County, um, um, but there are open areas that I can still service that are closer to my location. So it's kind of a tricky question to answer. Okay. So like, okay. for example, like, uh, I do, I service homes in Smyrna, mm -hmm. you know, which is, which is, I didn't purchase zip, zip codes, but no other franchisee has as well. So those typically fall closer to me because that's where my office is closest to. Okay. That's a good deal. But we really want to try to stay focused in Cobb mm -hmm. and Paulding. Exactly. What's the furthest away you've been to do one? So um, Coving I've been down to Covington. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a good deal. Now with it, it's important to us to know exactly what it is that you do so we can send that referral over to you. And of course, we want to send you that target as often as possible. But one of the other ways we try to bring value is sending you over a good referral partner. Like for us, you know, we're helping with the merchant services and a CPA is a good one, a website developer, because they talk to that decision maker. As you have been doing the business, who have you found to be a good referral partner for yourself? Absolutely. Um, roofing companies are great partners. Um, okay. A lot of times they'll um, subcontract out the work. Um, restoration companies. Um, painting companies, okay, um, uh, contractors in general, just great referring. Um, anytime I can establish relationships like those, it's great. Okay, well that's awesome. That's awesome. Now, the knowing who the target is, who your referral partners are, we want to send you that. Uh, what are some of the places that you've been networking that you have seen to help you as you started this business? Yeah, so um, coming into the franchise, there's been um, things in place that all of the franchisees typically do, and B&I was one of them. So as I um, benchmark with some of the other franchisees, they're like, hey, find a good B&I. So um, that was my first place. Okay. So right now, um, that's been my main networking, getting that off the ground, and I've had some great one-on-ones, and you know, it's trying to cultivate some of those relationships. Yeah, the B&I has been great. You know, I've been in B&I group over three years now, and it's building those relationships in there. Uh, when I started with credit card processing many years ago, I just knocked on a ton of doors to try to start the business to go. But then I took on networking and building those relationships have been key to the success that I've had because it's just like coming in, meeting with you, learning what it is that you do and seeing how I can best send you someone, either that person or that referral partner. And then you keep me on top of mine and send me over. Just as an example, I received an opportunity opportunity yesterday that I was able to close this morning from an old BNI member that's not even in BNI anymore. Mm -hmm. So I can see the importance of, you know, you being in those types of groups. Uh, so of course, we'll just let you know if there's any other groups out there that we know uh, that we can try to help get you in. Now, I know you're up and going, uh, you're just getting started, uh, but share with me, what does the future look like for you? What are you trying to get accomplished in the future? Absolutely. I mean, the future's bright. Um, I'm trying to create a culture and environment where people want to work, where they feel valued, and they can provide for their families. Okay. And so that's my vision. And then long, even longer term, build this business up where this could be an option for my kids. Okay. 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 You want to stay in this area or are you trying to expand it further? I will, I will look to expand for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's also, that's also a great thing. For our listeners to keep in mind, he has legacy in mind. So it's not where it is something that he's doing for the moment. So each client that he comes in contact with, he's going to provide a level of service to keep you for the long run for his children in the end. So you can know when you do contact him, he's going to be there to help you. Now, what other ways outside of us trying to send over the referrals, the referral partners, can us at the MP group help you? Um, I think just um, facilitating relationships within the BNI. I mean, you've been in this one's particular for three plus years. Um, 
So just eventually when we start getting face to face, just um, any way you could help just, Hey Keith, I think this would be a good person for you to talk to or Hey, so and so get with Keith. Anything like that would be a very beneficial. Yeah, we'll definitely make sure to keep you, you know, on top of mind. I don't have anyone in the gutter industry to send people over to. And now that I've met you, talked with you, learned about you, know that you're a superstar baseball player, so awesome by the way, <laughs> uh, that we can send them over your way. Um, with what this message is for at burn the ship it is truly focusing on you you know highlighting your business who to send over to you so we want to give you the last word is there something that you would like to share with everyone um yeah so you have the you have the mic <laughs> the floor is mine yes now i would just leave with anyone listening or watching that you know at the brothers that just do gutters you know in liz and i's company you know we're really looking to reinvent contractor service um Every customer, as a family-owned local business, is of the utmost importance. So um, I can just let people know that if they come to us, they're going to just have a whole, totally different level of service when it comes to communication and experience. So um, that would be the last word I would leave with anybody listening. That's a good deal. Again, customer services is focus. A lot of people say that, but I truly do believe he's going to provide that based off of his history and what he has done. How can the people contact you? What's the best way for them to get in contact with you? Yeah, absolutely. They can email me at keith.butler at brothersgutters.com, or they could call me at uh, my number, 678-472-2766. Okay, say the number again so they'll know. 678 678- Four seven two two seven six six. Any gutter issues that you need, new ones, ones to get repaired, ones that have the leaf guard on top of it. I'm sure that's what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys need any of those services, uh, please reach out to Keith. And again, we truly appreciate you taking time out and sharing with us your message and how we can best help you. And today, again, we have Mr. Keith Butler. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right.